There are so many stars that have been sidelined this season, including that guy. So take a look at this, guys. This is the Pelican season tickets ad. Zion Williamson, you know him, the highly touted number one overall pick and the face of the franchise, nowhere to be found. So CJ McCollum, he said this on Saturday at All-Star. He's a big part of our future. Obviously, you know, we're looking forward to getting him back. I haven't had conversations with him directly. I've spoken to some people close to him and look forward to sitting down uh, with him sooner than later. But I, I don't really, uh, I know I know about as much as you do right now, but really? I want to get to the bottom. No, no, no. All right, so that was Saturday, and I actually spoke to C.J. McCollum this morning, and he told me that since he said this, Zion has reached out to him, and the two have spoken. But, J.J., what's your reaction to sort of all of this hullabaloo here? <laughs> this is very abnormal, and Matt, mm. you can attest to this as well. Uh, Matt's one of the, I always tell people this, Matt is one of the greatest teammates that I ever had. It doesn't matter if you make a trade for a player of C.J. McCollum's caliber or you sign a two-way player. You, you text him, you call him, you yeah. reach out. Like, it, CJ played five games for the Pelicans before All-Star break. It, it really is baffling. I, I want to hammer home this point, and this goes for anybody in professional sports. If you play a team sport, you have a responsibility as an athlete to be fully invested. You have to be fully invested in your body, in your work, and in your teammates. That's part of the job description. So to me, I know he's hurt, and I know he's away from the team, there's still a responsibility to just be a good teammate. That's part of it. It's it's, it's unprofessional, and I, I don't want to I don't want to just belabor that. But it is unprofessional, and I would say this too. I'm rooting for Zion Williamson. I think we all are. We want him to be healthy. We want him to be on the court doing amazing things and and, and showcasing his unique skill set. Um, but but part of it is just being a a, a good teammate. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that one of the things that sort of gets conflated sometimes is being the best player and being the leader of a team. Big it's difference. not always the same. But frankly, right now, Zion Williamson is neither. He's not their best player because he's not playing, and he isn't the leader of this team, which is why when you look back at who the Pelicans have sort of put around Zion, it's been folks like you, J.J. Redick. It's been uh, folks like Drew Holiday, C.J. McCollum, and Garrett Temple, Matt. I mean, this is a learn. When you become a leader, it, 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 JJ can tell you, it takes a while. And Malika, we spoke about this before we were on air. You know, Giannis learned how to be a leader. Not everyone can yeah. come into the league like LeBron and just be a leader. Zion is a very unique talent, and I just think it's going to take some time to learn how, in, uh, how leaders move because that's what they're looking for him to do. But on the flip side, I don't think Zion wants to be there. There's been rumbles, not necessarily from him, but from his family, from the jump. And it's hard for small market teams to keep young superstars because there's such a, an attention to the big markets and the opportunities that you can get elsewhere. So I think the writing's kind of been on the wall for mm. a minute and the Pelicans have kind of overlooked it, hoping they can change things. But it told me a lot when they don't have him in the season ticket promo, the franchise player. So obviously the Pelicans know something that we may not personally know, but they may know from either his family or him, an inside source. I don't think Zion wants to be there anymore. Well, Zach, he's eligible to sign an extension this offseason. What do you make of the situation down in New Orleans? Well, first of all, when we hired JJ, I texted him a congratulations, welcome to the team text message for the record. And yes, <laughs> this is one of the Just biggest, <laughs> this is one of, this is one of the biggest storylines of the offseason. This is Zion's third year. Every first round pick after your third year, you're eligible for an extension up to the max. I would love to be a fly on the wall for those negotiations if they even happen, given that Zion may miss this entire season and is clearly disconnected with the Pelicans. Look, JJ and Matt can speak to this. The NBA has a weird labor structure where if you're a first round pick, the team that picks you, you have no say in that really. You have some say, you can strong arm your way here or there, but you don't have that much say. And because of restricted free agency, they essentially have control of you for six, seven, eight, nine years. That's a long, long time in a profession that doesn't last 20 or 30 years. That might be your whole career. And for a long time, there's been whispers who is the first real star player mm. who instead of signing that extension is gonna say, no, thank you. I will come back for the one year qualifying offer, which he can do after his fourth year. And then I become an unrestricted free agent instead of a restricted free agent. My team doesn't get matching rights on me. I can go wherever I want. And by the way, you may trade me before that because you realize I'm leaving. 
I don't know if Zion's going to do that. I'm not tied into his camp. It's obvious that there's something amiss with him and New Orleans. And the risk, obviously, is particularly if you guys had some health issues, you would normally want to sign for all the money you can get right when you can get it. So this summer is going to be really interesting. I'm not tied into his camp, but something is very, very wrong here, and the entire league is watching. I think what's also interesting is we're not necessarily talking about the fact, again, you, you just touched on it, Zach. Where is his health at? You're mm. hearing he may have a second ankle surgery. And for someone as big and dynamic and athletic and strong as he is, foot or knee issues are a big red flag. So I'm interested to see, like, where is his health at? Because I think a prime Zion, the best Zion we're going to see is between 260 and 265. He looks a lot bigger than that right now. And I think he's obviously played at a higher weight. So to me, where is the health and stability of his feet? because if you don't have feet, you can't play. Well, and you can see the Pelicans record there with and without Zion. JJ, though, you, you've been in this locker room. If you're Zion Williamson's teammates, how are you handling all of this when you're hearing, okay, initially there was no conversation between this new star coming in and the star, the person you've kind of been told is, or maybe not told, but seen is the face of this team. Yeah, in Zion's defense, when you are injured, it is it, it naturally feels like you're detached mm -hmm. from the team when you can't compete with your teammates, and, and he's not physically in New Orleans. I, I think yeah. he's been in Portland. I'm not sure where he's at right now. So in his defense, like, there is a level of detachment. And I, I, I would say from the Pelicans player standpoint, they've, they've felt detached from him the whole season. They haven't had him. They haven't had him for games. They've gone out and battled. Willie Green has done a great job. They've got a position to, to be in the playing game this year. Um, but it's one of these out of sight, out of mind things to me. If I'm a Pelicans player, the guy hasn't really been around the team. Um, so I, I don't think it's that big of a deal in that locker room right now. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.